Here is the story about this very smart programmer. Let's call him Mark. Mark knew exactly how to protect his job, how to make sure that nobody in the country could take his job and kick him out. His position was safe because the system that he designed was an excellent learning experience that could take months and months of intensive training. And let me tell you, Mark wasn't that big on teaching new employees how to get rid of him. Well, <laughs> well, who would be right? He used very practical tools for securing his position. Number one, negligence. Number two, internal proprietary solution for every single problem. This is Smok, your fellow software developer, and this segment is called Having Coffee with Smok, where we talk all things tech, IT and software development. Let's do a quick career lesson today. Technical debt 101. How can we create it? So be like Mark, start without a plan when design is not done and incorporate every single change in requirements immediately. You will save a lot of time. You don't need to worry about reworking all of the things that you've done later, right? So indulge business people and release the products as soon as possible, before anybody realizes this makes no sense. <laughs> and it will help you to cover all of the previous older debt with it. Shh. Keep technical debt a secret. There is no point in educating business people on consequences of too early releases or pushing for fixes. Your keys to success are simple. Lack of elasticity in your components. Modularity? None of that. Stick to tight coupling and monolithic design. Oh, testing is doubting. Quick and risky band-aid fixes on production are the way to go. And no documentation at all. None. Zero. Nada. We aren't writers. We are coders. And the best type of code there is, is self-documenting code. Right? Knowledge sharing will decrease your job security and can encourage spies. Definitely never share any knowledge around the organization, especially with junior folks. Often merging from and to master is for wusses. Real coders are solving the conflicts like real men when they are big and hairy. Also, it is important not to start refactoring process too soon. It should be like great wine. Take years or even decades to mature and be ripe. Hey, it may actually turn out that they will shut the project before you have to do it. If there is one thing that this business needs, it's definitely new technology, new framework, new standard, and definitely it has to be developed in-house without any knowledge spilling outside of the company. This way, we can be sure that nobody out there can learn it and take our job. And of course, you should always ignore all of the brand new spanking, cutting edge technology coming in from the industry. Also, like proper hunters, we should rely on our instincts, not knowledge. Knowledge will eventually go out of date, become useless. No, learning is wasteful. Think about all of that time that you can save. Football isn't going to play itself. If you can, make sure it's very hard to figure out who the owner of this piece of software is. The better you can hide it, the better. If you absolutely must have an owner, let's make everybody an owner. Owner for you, owner for you, owner for you. Oh, and if you ever buy some outsource software and bring it in-house, make sure to stick to the ownership rule. So these are some techniques Mark used. And you get the picture. Nobody could replace him. And just months before he could safely retire, the company gets shut down. There was another guy, exactly like Mark, but way more proficient. He drove the business to the ground. And both of them suddenly needed a brand new job. Hard ask if the company openly blamed the tech guys. All right, all right, all right. So maybe tech debt isn't such a great thing. 
It can cost you your job, losing a great project or even a promotion. However, it's very hard problem to solve, even in the most professional companies. We often prioritize the software that works over the software that is perfect. And sometimes you even don't get a say in accumulating technical debt. You just inherit it with some project that comes your way. Managing technical debt is like struggling with addiction. First, you have to acknowledge its existence and slowly but steadily work towards reducing it to minimum. Oftentimes it's hard to measure how big the technical debt is and how much time will it take to resolve it. So it's very important to have those backlog refinement sessions and go over the data to assess which direction are we going. Is the tech debt growing or shrinking? Are we prioritizing the right things? Estimate those tasks and figure out if those that are at the bottom of the priority list are still relevant. And frankly, it's imperative that the product owner understands technical debt. If that's not the case, it's highly probable that your team doesn't convey the message well enough. Set time for paying the debt. If a couple of days in a sprint ain't gonna cut it, or you'd rather avoid context switching, set feature sprints and tech debt sprints. Or think on even broader terms. Operational excellence. Work on your tools, on your process, address your debt. If you find yourself accumulating more and more and more and more debt, set a limit on how much your team is allowed to have and refuse accepting any new features until this is resolved. This is very important to protect your team and your company from increasing costs of maintenance and feature development. Make sure that your manager understands what is going on. Surface your debt as soon as it's acquired in any reporting systems you have. Make it so visible that you can smell the software rot creeping in. And most importantly, keep the software entropy at bay. As story from The Pragmatic Programmer goes, the New York police decided to crank down on small petty crime like graffiti and broken windows. And they did that to keep the bigger stuff out. And it worked. They sent a message that nothing is too small to be fixed. And same thing goes for the programming world. If you keep your code base nice and clean and neat, it's way harder for anybody to litter in it. Don't get yourself in a situation that all your time is spent on fixing the broken windows, broken light bulbs and washing the graffiti from your code. And remember, tech debt is exactly like monetary debt. It doesn't come without interest. Stay safe and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers.